Sanders, I'm a little bit older grad student, and I have to confess, it's one thing when I'm boring my friends and family with this sort of stuff because I can be factually wrong and they don't know, but you guys will. <laughs> so I hope it's right. We all are in this room because there's some type of a highway project that we're excited about, even whether we're working on it or not, but it's only a dream until it's funded. So one of the things I'm looking at in my paper is how do we fund the projects? Because the motor fuel tax has some problems. There's a lot of people skipping the gas station now because their cars don't use gasoline or diesel. And uh, so we're gonna look at a couple uh, real world situations, toll facilities, a BMT tax, the state's rolling out. You kind of see some of the pros and cons on that. The most recent, the FAST Act that Congress had puts us in the hole quite a bit. They found a way to close it, but they were grabbing some really weird taxes to try to close that. The user fees don't bring in enough revenue in and of themselves to pay for the projects that Congress kicks back to states um, in the five-year surface transportation bill. So how did, how did we end up here? Well, there's a number of things going on. States are uh, raising the gas tax a little bit, but the federal gas tax has been frozen for a very long time because it takes a literal act of Congress to be able to get that gas tax up. It's only happened a handful of times over the history of the gas tax, and so it has this kind of cyclical boom-bust uh, view to it. It doesn't help that we're getting better uh, fuel economy with the, for the miles we do drive, and so we're only buying, say, half as many gallons of gas per mile uh, VMT we put on the, uh, on the uh, road. And then we're driving more in general anyway. A number of factors that play into that, uh, two-income households, the cost of transportation going down. And even if you have, uh, adjust it for population growth, we're just driving more in general. The freeway network is aging. A lot of it was built as part of the Interstate Act. The bridges are functionally uh, obsolete or uh, structurally deficient. Um, a lot of states, like this is a project here in Orange, uh, or I think it's actually near Corona down in Southern California, where the states are having to jump in and fix things where when the project was originally built back in the 1960s, they had a lot of federal match money to do it. And now it's putting burdens on states and regions to have to come up with that kind of money. So growing demand, shrinking revenue. And so one of the ideas that was really big, especially under the Bush administration, was public-private partnerships to build toll roads. And the idea is these uh, great separated toll facilities are really expensive. And Texas jumped on board and said, these are great. This is the solution. Doesn't matter what type of vehicle you drive, it captures the revenue. So, it, but the philosophy is a little bit like Wimpy. Wimpy's the guy who says, I'll gladly pay you Tuesday for a hamburger today. You know, the, the facility still has to be purchased at some point. It's just how you're going to collect it. And they tried to collect it at point of consumption as people were driving down the road. And so, uh, Texas Highway 130 was the big experiment. There's, there's kind of a, a spectrum of public-private partnerships. And this was more on the private end. This was going to be a very aggressive uh, one using uh, private capital. To parallel, I-35 there has uh, daily traffic numbers that I, I don't know them specifically, but I know they're in the six figures. It's a very busy road. And so they built this toll facility parallel to it. And it was a mess. The, the, I don't understand how that all works, but this big business web of all the partners that had to come together to fund this thing. But if I understand it correctly, TxDOT's worked with this consortium and they were going to get the toll concession to build a new road. They reached out to big banks in Europe to uh, get capital. FHWA said, hey, this is neat, this is new and exciting. We'll kick in, I think it was somewhere around $300 million themselves as a loan. They loan the money back to the consortium. They would then charge a toll and would get the toll concession from TxDOT. So they built it. The road's open, they cut the ribbon. And they even um, got TxDOT to agree to an 85 mile per hour speed limit to kind of bring, bring those travel costs down a little bit so people can really get flying and maybe offset the cost they'd have to pay on the toll. But nobody drove on it. <laughs> and so what do you do if you raise the toll to try to get more revenue because you owe money to those banks, fewer people will drive on it. And if you lower the toll, you don't make as much money so what do you do? Well, the uh, consortium filed for bankruptcy the, about a year ago. And effectively what it did is they said, uh, yeah, we're out of here, goodbye. 
And so now that's leaving tech stock to sit down with FHWA and these banks in Europe and try to figure out some kind of a strategy of how they can try to get at least some of their money back. Now this happened on, on, the, on that spectrum a little less aggressively, but there was a public-private partnership down in San Diego uh, back, it was probably about 10, 15 years ago where they had a similar problem, that the traffic project projections on the toll road were much more optimistic than what they actually saw. And in this case, the local MPO just said, you know what, we're just going to throw this in our uh, regional transportation plan and just consider this like a new project, we're just going to buy it out. And so probably 20 years from now or so when they have it bought out, they can just make it a freeway. And they just said that that was a disaster. Um, Traditional tolling has had issues. The uh, Orange County toll roads near, uh, kind of near Disneyland, but they're up in the hills, in one of the wealthiest counties in America, has had to keep uh, refinancing. They refinanced in 2011 and 2014. Sort of like you buy a house you can't afford, you're a little optimistic about how much money you're going to make, and the payments are hard, but then the interest rates went down, so you refinance for another, you know, 50 years, and have cheaper payments, so that's kind of how they got around it. But it begs the question, if one of the wealthiest counties in the country is having trouble getting people to take the toll road, what about more modest counties like Davis County or Weber County or Utah, you know, here where we don't have that, that Southern California money? Oregon is playing with VMT, and they're saying, let's just charge people by the mile, 1.5 cents. They call it Origo. It's like Oregon with no end. But. And they just recently expanded the pilot program so they have a few thousand people testing it out but you plug this box into the data port on your car it collects data and then you plug it into a meter at a, some sort of official station you pay your tax and then later you can get a tax rebate on gas taxes you paid and get all your gas tax back when you file your state taxes so 1.5 cents per mile flat fee but it is regardless of what type of passenger vehicle you use and there's a criticism where they've said you know it kind of looks like Hummers are subsidizing Priuses because if you look at the taxes, with the old gas tax, you'd be paying about 100 bucks with the Prius, now you're paying 225 a year. The Hummer, you're paying a lot less. And I'll be darned, the people who are signing up for Origo tend to be people who are registering their Chevy Tahoes, their Dodge pickups. You don't see a lot of people with Priuses and Camrys signing up for this pilot program. And so, if there's a philosophical question policymakers and, and we in this room have to ask ourselves are we collecting the tax because a vehicle is just a congestion data point in a synchro model in which case it doesn't matter it's just one little car in the big traffic puzzle or is it a pavement wrecking machine where a heavy vehicle <laughs> puts more stress on the road and it should pay more there's also issues of privacy, even though it's a small, tiny fraction of people who in a kind of post-Edward Snowden world are concerned about government intrusion and privacy, some to a very extreme level. Even if this is only 1% of registered drivers, that's still 2 million licensed drivers who are concerned about this, who, who will be mandated into using a VMT tax that they may find intrusive. I personally recommend looking at all this, that we're trying to do, a lot of policy decisions are trying to do a one-size-fits-all model, but the gas tax still brings in a lot of revenue. That five-year surface transportation bill is was showing $205 billion of revenue coming in. Perhaps you phase these new things into the new technology, like electric cars, hydrogen cars, Flintstones powered cars, I don't know, and uh, keep the fuel tax as it is for the old existing fossil fuel powered cars. Though I do concede there's a problem, there's technologies that show up, where do you put a plug-in hybrid that's half electric, you know, that you plug in the wall and half, what tax do they pay? So th there's no real easy answer to that. In the meantime, raising the gas tax, indexing it to inflation can happen. It hasn't happened federally, but Utah did it, Clark County, Nevada did it, they've been using that money to help pay for Interstate 11 which would eventually connect Phoenix and Las Vegas together. There's a big Boulder City bypass that they're paying for. And this wasn't in my paper, but I just thought this was interesting. Two weeks ago, California passed a big um, tra surface transportation bill for their state. And one of the things they did is stuck on a $100 extra DMV fee when you go to register your car each year. It's not really equitable because it doesn't take into account mileage at all. 
But this is kind of a patchwork stuff that's going to happen and keep happening, just trying to get revenue until we're able to uh, find a more comprehensive solution that takes all of this stuff into account. So I believe that's it. Thank you. I turned it off. <laughs>